Thank you very much. We would like to summarize this evening with the uh, words uh, from Professor Ruth Gabison. I don't think she needs any introduction. It's enough to tell you that she's a laureate of the Israel Prize. She's a law uh, because she's a scholar. She promotes uh, thoughts about what we were discussing today. So let's hear her. Good evening. I'm very happy to be here this evening and to listen. Good evening. Now you can hear her. I'm very happy to be here this evening and to talk about uh, this important topic. Its uh, force is that it really puts another important mirror in front of us with a different point of view. This is uh, very unique, the report, because it's a continuation of testing Jews in America, namely the interests of the editors of this uh, survey about Jewish populations in the world started with a very uh, interesting community of Jews in America and as a result of the interesting lesson uh, about the power of the findings regarding that community, they thought that they should also look into the Israeli community. So it did things that are really important and it continues the American thing and concentrates on the religious element. It dismantles the Arab population to its religious components. That's something important. It hasn't been done. We talk about the tribes. The Arab tribe is, is one. And I think Sami Sahmoha is right when he says that since with the Jews we talk about the internal religious structure of the Jews in a very detailed way, and we leave the Arabs as one, uh, only religious uh, groups, we actually uh, shed light on them. We dismantle the light, but we don't do it enough. And that is, uh, goes two ways. It goes two ways in the sense that in the state of Israel as well, there are three issues that exist in the states as well. One is the issue of uh, religious and state, religion and state. What is the relationship between the state and the religions of the people? Uh, one of the great differences between the first and second uh, research of Greenberg, uh, the, they were sp speaking about uh, the Jewish groups, which is a minority, which is uh, dwindling, whereas here in Israel, it is a majority that uh, uh, stopped uh, eroding within this small state of Israel. So we have a question of religion and state. Then we have relationships between people from various religions. Then we have the question about the relationship between different religions, whether they're only on a religion uh, level or maybe they have also a cultural uh, level. In the state of Israel, obviously Arabs are the group that includes a few religions and a few differences between religion and secularity, whether, but in the United States, which is really the state of all its citizens, a state where there is constitution and civil religion, which is the constitution and all the religious are private, the religious existence in America and the relations of the Jews between religion and culture and nationality are much less complicated because by definition, all of them are privatized. Now in America, it's much easier for a Jew to be religious. And that's why uh, the division is such than to be a non-religious Jew, but a national one. So they keep saying it's uh, culture, it's of, um, uh, of origin, it's not nationality because uh, they say, if not, then what about your Americanisms? So that is a problem with their citizenship. So all these terms and concepts of the Jewish society in America has a different kind of thinking than the goal for which uh, the state of Israel was established as a Jewish state. And this goal 
is exactly, if you remember Zionism, that's exactly the goal, to find one place in the world where not just the Jews will be a majority and they'll have self-determination and it will be their nation state, but this will be the only place where they will not have to face a challenge that the, their Judaism will be privatized. There'll be a situation that you're a Jew in your home and an American outside or a Frenchman when you leave your house. So there are uh, def definite differences that uh, uh, Israel can learn a lot from America, but also this comparison between America and Israel and the Jewishness or religion in Israel or the identity in Israel has to be very, very um, clear. I want to speak a little bit about this uh, report, she calls it. Many things were said, just something very short. Israel, there is actually three main questions. Religion and state, uh, marriages, uh, uh, security, uh, Saturday uh, day off, uh, public funding, all these things are classical issues of religion and state all over the world. In America, there's a separation, not exactly always, but here it's a symbiosis. The other things are the national tensions, the conflict, the conflict between the Jewish majority and the Arab minority, the non-solutions uh, so of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict in a region which is becoming more religious and that, uh, that these murderous uh, religious interpretations of the Islam is now much more dramatic. Minorities in the Middle East, not just Jews, today are really in a very difficult situation. No question that this uh, um, uh, imp also implies on the Jewish people and how they perceive their own religion in the Middle East. And the third question is the political uh, frameworks. What is the role of the state in these re social relations between Jews and Arabs, religion, religious and secular. What does the uh, state do? Is it an arbitrator? It does make uh, law and order? Or is it determined in its own essence as something that has to do to one with one of these elements of the various groups? And obviously the main question, how all this tallies together? What are the symbiotic relationship between all these questions? Pew about the Jews in America actually checked only the first question. All sorts of things that have to do with the self-determination is uh, religion and state. Very important, very great, but just notice how less complicated or severe or difficult is it than the situation in which we live. And I think this uh, actually pinpoints at some of the things that we spoke about today, about the findings of this fascinating uh, survey. I'm not going to talk again about uh, uh, the wish to not have too many Arabs here. I think uh, 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 this is something very important, that Jews have a habit, and it's natural, that they talk to themselves. They talk to themselves about themselves, and when they talk about the Arab minority, then it depends about their approach. But basically, this is part of the thing, that in a Jewish state, okay, Jews can talk about themselves, and talk. That, that's part of it. But we have to ask the opposite question. In the fantasy of the Arabs, to bring back the Nakba. What does it mean to bring back the Nakba? To bring back the situation before the Nakba. To say the Nakba is an historical thought that has to be amended. What about this dream which says, oh, it's a dream, it's nothing. We don't relate to it. Yes, it's a dream, but what is this dream? This dream says that there will be here only those who were here in 1925 or 38 or whatever. And then there will be a minority. So. Maybe we have to put this into proportion, but this is part of the story. One of the things that I thought uh, that was not said here is that, I thought about it. You ask the Jews, what are the main problems that you think you have to cope with? 40% of them say apartments, housing, whatever, and 40% say security, existence, whatever. Then you ask the Arabs, what are the major problems? They say the Palestinian Jewish uh, conflict doesn't exist there. They are concentrated on the elements of their life, and that's what we heard just now from the Qadi. 
that they actually say we are concentrating on the good life that we have in the state of Israel. And of course, the gap between them and their leaders is uh, incredible. How do they see things? But only in the state of Israel. There can be a situation where the Committee for the Status of Women, and it's headed by an Arab member of Knesset. For a whole day, they are talking about how to uh, go to the mikveh and the relationship between the mikveh woman in charge and the Jewish women. And should the rabbis tell the women how to tell the women how to dip in the mikveh? And that's headed by an Arab uh, member of Knesset. This is really the uh, doctrine of the four tribes that the president started. I think it's important to say one thing about it, and that is that there are four tribes, but three of them are Jewish. Namely, there's still within these tribes a, a majority and a minority. And another important point, I said before there were three problems, religion and state, the relationship between the groups, the conflict, and the political framework, one state or two states. President Rivlin, I don't know what he says now, but his dream was one state. And uh, Rivlin, the president, is against the partition of the state. So the four tribes, he was. Okay, if he changed his mind, okay, interesting. But for us, it's not important now, Rivlin. That's okay. That's fine. I just want to say that we heard uh, one of the data, which is a, a deterioration of the faith of Jews and Arabs in Israel in the potential of the vision of two states. This thing is not surprising. It is something which is very significant because it says that on the one hand, uh, the political solution doesn't seem clear at all. And maybe we're going back to pre-1948. And on the other hand, in the existence, when you describe your problem, you don't talk about the conflict. The leaders of the Arab minority and some of the Jewish leaders talk about the conflict. But most of the leadership talks about the life in the state of Israel, small. The state of Israel of the 8 million and the four tribes. Okay, so that's more or less regarding the research. I also feel that one should continue with this. And I think that the most important issue that comes up, and that will tie into the second part of what I want to talk about, is not the fact that I do not want to foresee what's going to happen, but I would like to say what we need to strive to achieve. And I think it was said here, I think that we have three groups, then it doesn't really, I mean, three big groups, and it doesn't really matter what their size is, because nine, none of those three can be ever trampled once again. It used to be different, but now it no longer exists. None of those groups finds itself in a situation wherein the other groups can associate against it and detrimentally affect it in any way. And that is a new point in Israeli democracy. And I believe that a vision, we ought to discriminate between various levers. We have the one of the, of the actual that of the Acharita Yamim. It's a kind of lighthouse that we are striving to reach. And that perhaps does pave our way and lights our way. And yes, the, the lamb did live, yes, the, the wolf did live with the lamb. But in the Jewish vision, even when it does happen and that wolf does live with the sheep, will the wolf be a sheep? I mean, there's no situation where it, there is a humane society where no separations exist within it. We all believe in God, but all of us are separate peoples. In other words, even from that very primordial vision, it still says there will be different peoples. But what does it say in addition? It also says that you will not raise your sword against each other and you will fight. You will no longer fight against each other. In other words, you have to remember and express not a loss of identity, not not everyone being the same, but diversity, differences between people, stable, stable differences and peace between people. That is the vision. Now, the vision that I'm talking about, that state vision, is something much more demanding because there it needs to not only 
be actually have actually reasonable aspirations about how we're going to do it, but also think how we derive some kind of policy out of all that. So in other words, we have to really think in terms of reality and things ought to tally with reality. I think that we saw that very sort of in a prominent way. We felt that in the actual survey, but it, I think that the state of Israel should not aspire to be a state of all its citizens. It is also wrong to think that the Arab wants it to be one for all its citizens. We heard here that they want it to be multiculturalism, multicultural, that it should respect and um, each and every one of the groups within it and, each, and respect each and every one of those identities within it. In other words, what do we want? We want different groups, Jews, Jews, non-Jews, and different kinds of Jews, and we want that all these groups should be living together in peace, respect each other, respect their, everyone's desire, grosso modo, not to be assimilated. I mean, you can say that you, I mean, if you, 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 you're not a racist if you say that you want to educate your child not to marry someone from another group. Simply you want to preserve and retain your beliefs and your faith and your education and you want to educate your son or your daughter that it may be cool to go out with someone else, but it is a very decision in earnest and when you want to live in a family and educate them, it's not something that you can take lightly. You're part of society and we're all here to live together, but in a different way. And those are important things that have to be mentioned. Israel ought to strive to actually achieve something that we heard from everyone, not to a state of all its citizens, but rather a good balance between social cohesion, in other words, the well-being of all its citizens without any differences between religion, ethnic community, etc., committed to all of these, but to also our diversity between different groups, where in each group will find a way of doing that, but together there is a shared responsibility for the, for the burgeoning of that state simultaneously. Therefore, you have to encourage the diversity and uh, try and distance it from this kind of hatred and hostility. But that's not always so easy to, go to do. And why? Because there are groups whose agenda is totally different. And these forces actually exist between the Jews and the non-Jews. And we have to actually contend with these obstacles that exist on our path to the vision that should be a shared vision. And I believe it is a shared vision. But how it, what it actually means for the state of Israel, it means that we need to promote this in the framework of democracy. And I think that this survey and a lot of the discourse in the state of Israel with the, de with the tension between de democratic character and Jewish democracy, disrupts things because two different things that can be compared. They are two different entities. It does not diminish from the value of democracy to come and say that, that is a sh it is a system of governance to actually serve people with v perhaps even opposing worldviews, living but in partnership. That is the whole aim of democracy. It is not directed it can exist in homogeneous societies, but it's not directed for it. I mean, in its inherent role is when the views are diverse, sometimes even opposing. And now what exactly is it saying is that we all agree, as it was said, that we are all here together and no one is going anywhere. No one is going anywhere. And therefore, we need to find a way of living here together. And for those who actually make little holes in that ship so that the water gets in, we don't like it. That means that we're all on it and we haven't got another ship if it sinks. So do not be confused. There is no other ship. But on the other hand, to fight and argue about what is going to be on that ship, fair enough. I think that 98%, and that surprised me by the I thought it would be about 90 or 88 percent, but 98 percent of all the Jewish pop groups in Israel want a law of return and they want a Jewish state. I'm surprised. I never thought that that was the figure. I still must admit that I'm very surprised, but that is the figure. Okay. The Arabs and the state 
state of Israel have to understand that true, yes, and they should be allowed to say we want something different. They should be allowed to say it, but they cannot truly say two things. First of all, on one hand, you can say, you can define yourself in any way you want to define yourself, capitalist, this, well, whatever you want to say, you want to be Jews, be Jews. That's optional. But on the other hand, they're saying, no, 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 but it couldn't possibly be something that aligns with democracy. So if the Jewish majority in the state of Israel can decide that they want one state wherein there will be a Jewish homeland, a historical homeland with a Jewish majority, and also a right for, for national self-determination, etc., etc. If the Jews decide to have that situation and they are permitted to, uh, to do that, fair enough. But if you say, as a matter of principle, that that kind of decision no longer has democracy, it's totally different. It's no longer legitimate because all of us want a totally different situation. That cannot tally. It in other words, it, that is an anti-democratic choice, and there you, then you are encouraging those who are saying, um, respect them but suspect them, and sort of click with your tongue. So democracy must be as such that on one hand, responsible for the, the, the whole, all the parts of that Israeli society, but on the other hand, defending the rights of not only the individuals, but also the groups to live their lives within it. And then after that, it's the nitty gritty. In other words, responsibility for the democratic balance is in the hands of the majority because they've got the clout. And therefore, it's incumbent upon us that a democracy should not only be the rule of the majority and of those who are in a majority can do whatever they want because of real considerations of justice like civil rights. It's not whatever can be done. Democracy is the logic that dictates that this society will solve its various conflicts and controversies. It will point them out, but still preserve the rights of those who are not in that majority. The responsibility is not only on the political leadership and not only mainly in the hands of the political leadership, but it is the governance of society. It is the leadership of the various communities. It's upon their shoulders. The onus is on them. In other words, of the majorities, the minorities, the tribes, and they can and must extricate from their traditions, the Christian, the Muslim, the Jewish, that they want to actually retain various components of identity, but they must extricate from those traditions the elements that strengthen the, the lack of tolerance to the rhetorics of hatred and the, the elevation of those considerations that that really ensure that people will live in the sh in the image of and therefore this is not a con jewish and democracy is not a contradiction but it must be something that strengthens each other because the actual specified content of democracy and social justice and the rights for the Gentile and religion and state, etc., etc., the specific content must come and emanate from the culture that we want to instill, and that is why we are here. And that culture for the Jewish majority is for the is the Jewish one, and for the minorities, it is their religious national values. And of course, we have to give the Arabs the opportunity to explain to actually to what the differences are between them, but also to help them interpret their own traditions and enhance that. So you can't just say that the Arabs are more religious because it's a national issue, but you have to say that there is a tendency to actually become more and more religious amongst the Arabs, but also amongst the Jews, by the way, and which is something that is a f something that has to be taken into account. Now, I don't think that you can differ 
completely differentiate between us and the Americans. But the Americans who have not allowed their country by bracketing groups and have separated things in such a way is very critical. I think we spoke about with the law of return and other things. In other words, for the sake of the state, it is very important that some of those halakhi questions should be privatized. And we have heard the echoes when we think about the Haredim and the Zionist religions, religious and others. They, this is much more comfortable than it is with the religious Zionists because it's a redemption in their eyes. But for the Haredim, the state has no religious meaning. So therefore, it can be separated. It's easier, by the way, with them. But I think vis-a-vis -vis the conflict, the, uh, one of the things that the political system has learned, and it's not bad, is to separate between arms, between the authorities. In other words, the executive arm, etc. So, uh, for example, this, of course, the moving of the Palestinian Israeli um, conflict, of course, is uh, crucial, but and they haven't succeeded. But it is how it is going to be solved is a critical question for the existence of the State of Israel. But it's not pos um, I don't believe that it's probable that it'll be able to be done in this political environment. Yes, I think. It's not a program to do it, is th what is lacking, but it is a reality that does not allow us to advance it and promote it. So basically what we ought to do is to take real problems of coexistence and solve them. And yes, we have many shared interests. If it's the GNP, the escalation of the economic sort of issues. If anyone thinks it's just isolationism, I don't know where you live. I keep me leaving Haredi people who are working, talking in the public spaces. I meet Arabs in places that they didn't visit beforehand, that they didn't frequent. If we're talking about in, this, in the pharmacies, in the telephone companies, in the supermarkets, in, in, in universities, in hospitals, their presence is extremely impressive. And I think that that is wonderful. And the picture is extremely diverse with multicolored hues embedded in it. And I don't think that this should blur the fact that here in the state of Israel, there is a plethora of shared life. Not only partnership, but um, perhaps shared amazement about all these things that exist. And that does exist as well. Now, to summarize, I think that it is possible to aspire, and that's something that we ought to aspire to the entire time, for a state that will be a national homeland for the Jewish a nation state, that it should be a nation state for the Jewish people. But in that state, there should be no discrimination, no shunning and exclusion of other groups. There, there won't be homogeneity of, of the Arabs or the Jews. Each and every one of the groups is a necessary component for the flourishing of the state. So the time has come to pool all these resources and all these groups. The women in all the sectors have started showing how strong they can and will be. And it's good that they do that each group does want to only does not want to abolish their exclusivity and they want to remain with some kind of, sort of own personal characters and that there is a switching of the sort of religious switching and also a kind of leakage from one to other but usually the minority seems to be sort of absor being absorbed more by a majority but in each of these groups there is a critical mass and none of them is in any kind of danger of extinction. Each can exist and they should not and do not threaten each other. Now, there was a suggestion that this state should be called Judah. So, but if you say that, then the citizens, there was an objection to it. That means that the citizens will be Jewish and then we do not have that semantic space, the conceptual space that enables us to have citizens in this country would, would not be Jewish. 
And then they said, okay, the state of Israel, yes, Israel is also connected to Jews, and yes, Israel can be for Jews and not Jews. And I think that's where we started stammering, in fact, and where we started losing our belief in the justice of our path. And I think that this was something that characterized the, the actual pioneering found, founding forefathers State. They said that one does not need to separate between the religion and the state uh, with some kind of preference for the secular or the others, and one should not believe in the belief of Tzur Israel of this. Of the in other words, we have to try and emphasize the democratic, equal, social cohesion. That was the ideal, and that was something that should have been and will must continue to be the ideal. And to try and reach that vision with that ideal, then we'll perhaps have a state where all the citizens and residents feel they are equal partners in its flourishing. The Jews can choose to live in their one homeland, where there are different perhaps ties here than there are perhaps in other countries. And non-Jews will be able to have their very complex identity and culture in their own way. And then the vision that will perhaps take place and that we should aspire for, but we have no control over, will turn those questions into run-of-the-mill questions about personal lives and identities and not questions that are today questions of life or death, of a collective threat, of allegiance, or perhaps something worse. Well, thank you, everybody. I see that you're walking out, so have a safe trip home. Thank uh, you, Pew, and all everybody who came and took part in it. The discussion will go on. Thank you, and good night to all. <laughs>